Welcome to People in Time, from the Department of History at Lancaster University, where we introduce you to historical figures from our research and teaching that help us to see the other side of history. I'm Marco Weiss, I'm a Cold War historian at Lancaster, and I'd like to introduce you to a woman who allows us to look at post-colonial Africa, the Cold War, and diplomacy from a novel, alternative perspective. Marie-Thérèse Oufeboigny, born Brou, is the widow of Félix Oufeboigny, who ruled Côte d'Ivoire for more than three decades, from the West African country's independence in 1960 to his death in 1993. Coming from one of the first Ivorian bourgeois family and associated with Baule nobility, she met the future Ivorian leader when she was still a student in Paris in the early 1950s. Félix, at the time already a leading West African politician who was rising from the French National Assembly into the French government, was immediately enthralled by her, divorced his wife with whom he had four children and married Marie-Thérèse in 1952. Consequently, when Félix became the first president of independent Côte d'Ivoire in 1960, Marie-Thérèse became the country's first lady. This was the very role for which Marie-Thérèse became known, whether it was inside Côte d'Ivoire or on the world stage. This was notably the case when she accompanied her husband to an official state visit to the United States in 1962, at the height of Africa's Cold War and President John F. Kennedy's charm offensive in the Third World. In Washington, she apparently captivated the attention of the American president and dazzled the media, which hailed her as the black or Africa's Jackie Kennedy. This was most likely supposed to be meant as a compliment, but it nevertheless reflected a racialized understanding of what had become a decolonizing and post-colonial world and merely perceived her as a diplomatic accessory or, at best, an asset. Her very own personality and the actual influence she might have had behind the scenes was not deemed to merit any attention. Similarly, within Côte d'Ivoire and Africa itself, Marie-Thérèse was merely perceived as the politically inactive wife of the Ivorian president who ruled his country if he thought necessary with an iron fist in collusion with France, the former colonial power. Moreover, the opposition elements in and outside of Côte d'Ivoire criticised her for not speaking out against the political repression of her husband's regime. Marie-Thérèse apparently did, however, discreetly and successfully intervene with Felix for leniency towards political prisoners and, more openly, promoted the position and role of women in Ivorian society. If he would just try to move Marie-Thérèse out of her late husband's shadow, and study her instead of his history, we would be able to gain a new, as well as a more complex and nuanced understanding of post-colonial Côte d'Ivoire and Africa.